Hey, it's Jose. Thanks for joining me on my journey to I am. Uh, I'm driving today, obviously. Um, but for those who are new, uh, I grew up as a convert to Hova Witness from the time I was five until I was 19. My mom was Roman Catholic before that. And I dealt with a, a lot of issues because of that as an adult. So I ended up with PTSD from my childhood and uh, fun times. Anyhow, today I want to talk about um, I want to talk about the supernatural and spirits and such. So I've had some experiences with something. Okay, I don't know what it is, um, but it. It pretty much all started uh, when we moved into the house that we're living in now. So my partner bought the house in 2008 and um, 2008? No, 2005. He bought it in 2005. I moved in in 2008. But, um, but from the moment that he moved in, I helped him set up the place like I took all the curtains down and washed them um, but the first incidents that we had was the the curtains there was I had this window in my dining room and it had curtains and there was a little sign on it set that said may God bless this house so I took the little piece of paper off the the curtains put it on the table to wash the curtains and my partner was making fun of me. He's like, oh, did your mom write this? And I said, no, if my mom wrote that, it would say, may Jehovah bless this house. It wouldn't say, may God bless this house. And some days go by, the note goes missing. Like it's not on the table anymore. I put, I put the curtains back up. The note was back up on the curtain. I said, did you put this note on the curtain to my partner? And he's like, no. And I knew I didn't put it on there, but it made its way back onto the curtain. That was the first incident of something strange in my home. Some time goes by, and back in 2005, we still smoked cigarettes in the house, and at the time I smoked cigarettes. So we would be smoking at like 10 o'clock when the kids would be going to bed, and we sitting at the kitchen table smoking and talking. And all of a sudden, my washing machine went off balance. I don't know if you've heard that before. It was like, ba-bang, ba-bang, ba-bang. And... So we both kind of like jumped up out of our chairs, like stood up and startled because, you know, it's an unexpected sound. So my partner go, runs down to the laundry room and we don't even have any laundry going. That's the second incident. <laughs> the third incident, we're sitting at the dining room table, smoking. <laughs> and we used to have these curtains in the in the dining room, sorry, the living room that were blinds, but they were the vertical blinds, the ones that hang down like that. And all of a sudden, and, and the window's nine foot long. It's like a nine, it's a really long window. And all of a sudden, the two in the middle open up as if somebody like had put, poked their head out and was looking out the two and stayed like that for five seconds and then let go so and you know went back like like this and then calmed down back to normal my partner and I are looking at each other I looked down to see if maybe the dog was at the bottom of there the dog wasn't there we have two heat registers but they're at the each end of these nine foot windows so it wasn't like the heat turned on and made these things move third incident fourth incident watching TV, I mean, sorry, sitting at the table, smoking, and the TV turns itself on. Now, I don't know if any of you guys have ever done it, like a brand, you got a brand new TV and you do a setup. So you plug the TV in and then you press setup, channel setup, and it just goes, you know, through the channels and sometimes twice through the channels and then it kind of flashes and says setup. The TV turned itself on and did, started going through the channel setup. But when it got through the channel setup, it went backwards through the channel setup. And my partner and I are like, what the, what the heck is happening here? Like, 
I'd never seen anything like this. You hear about this stuff, but you just, you don't, you know, normally see it, but this is happening to us. So at this point, my son, he is four. He's four, like, and my son, when we moved in, well, when we'd stay there, because we kind of would visit and sleep over and stuff for the first three years, but he'd say, Mom, do you see the lights? And he'd come over with me with, with his hand held out like this and be trying to put this, it's a green light, Mom, and he'd be trying to put it into my hand. And I'd be like, oh, that's so, because I didn't want to discourage him or, you know, make him think that what he's seeing isn't real or he's full. You know, I'm like, oh, that's so cool, you know? And, and then he used to tell me about the man and the woman that would be in his room. He'd be like, Mom, the man comes over to my bed when I'm laying down and he bends down and puts his face right in front of my face. And the woman, she stays in the corner. He'd be pointing to the corner of the room and he'd be like, she stays over there. I'll tell you about some years later, like probably, I don't know, 10, 11 years later, I went to go see its spirit medium. And uh, just to, to know, I mean, I, I don't know these things and they have been told they're bad, but I'm still going to go look because that's the person that I am. So I went to go see a spirit medium and as I'm talking to this spirit medium, she tells me that I have three spirits in my home. She says, there's a man that's not very nice. There's a woman who fears the man and there's a small kid, a small child. And he's the one who's always taking your keys. And I would just like, I just like, I'm actually talking about it right now. I'm getting the tingles all over because I was just like, I had forgotten about my son seeing these people. I mean, this has been like 10 years had passed over 10 years. And, and there, my keys do go missing. Like they'll go missing. And I'll be like, and finally, like after I looked everywhere, I'll just say it out loud. Okay, that, that's enough. I need my keys back now. And then they'll be like right there on the floor, like right in the middle of the floor. And you're like, no that wasn't there I've looked everywhere for my keys that was not there but there's my keys all right so some time goes by and uh, because I ended up getting like a smudge kit like uh, I don't know if you know what smudging is it's a Native American thing and they have some white sage and they light it and I have like I have a because I'm of, of Native heritage I have a hawk wing I found a hawk and I you know preserve this hawk wing and I use it and I kind of like just put the smoke all over because supposedly if there's spirits it releases them into the light you know to heaven or wherever people believe they're going so back to the energy back to source I'm not sure where they're going but I had done this smudging and things had calmed down in the house for a while like and then one day my partner was at the kitchen counter and he's trying to pour a glass of orange juice and the glass kept moving. And I, I don't know why I said this, but I said, oh, it's just your buddy Kenny Evans messing with you. Like I just, just kind of come out of my mouth. I don't normally, I'm not. <laughs> and, uh, and then all of a sudden his phone starts to ring. Now Kenny had died six months before. And we know for a fact that his son had turned off the phone three days after, you know, financial. We, we, we were in touch with them. We knew that the phone wasn't working. So the phone is ringing and it's Kenny Evans. And so my partner picks it up and there's nobody on the other end. And it was just so wild. It was like, it was just, it was kind of neat actually. So then a few more years goes by. And now my partner, even though we've seen all this stuff together, like this was always together and we were in our hallway upstairs we had like that three level split so we were standing in the hallway and all of a sudden my partner his face goes like this and hit like I could see the color dropping out of his face and he just goes <gasps> it's going into our room and he dropped I actually had to catch him because his knees buckled and out of fear like he was scared I didn't see what he saw but he said that he saw like a white smoke person, like a white fog or like a smoke, like it go into our room. And at that point I was like, Oh, I think he might believe, <laughs> you know, because I don't ever really see anything like that. Um, I, I've never actually seen anything until 
a little bit later. So a little bit later, um, I don't know when this would have been. I was camping with my partner and his brother and I, I ate some mushrooms and so did one of the other people, but not my partner. My partner was just, doesn't, he drinks beer. He kind of, you know, keeps an eye on me, makes sure I, I never take too much to get foolish or anything like that. But so we're all just sitting there at the bonfire. It's like, you know, midnight or whatever, like it's late. And all of a sudden I'm watching a satellite. I don't know if you've ever seen a satellite in the sky. It looks like a star that's moving and it's just moving real slow. Like, and it's just like a dot and it's just moving. So we're watching. I'm like, Hey guys, look at the satellite. And you know, we're all watching the satellite and all of a sudden the satellite takes a 90 degree turn. I mean, it's going like this and then now it's going like this. We all look at each other because if you've ever done mushrooms, you know that everybody's on their own trip. You're not seeing the same stuff as what that other person is seeing. Like, you're just not. And my partner, he wasn't even doing that. He was just drinking beer. So it's not like we were all tripping. Like, we're just... So I'm trying to rationalize it. I'm thinking to myself, like, okay, what just happened here? Like, okay. And then I thought, like, the first thing that comes to my mind, okay, satellites have, like, reflective mirrors. That's what makes you be able to see them. And I thought, okay, well, maybe one satellite was going this way. And just as it was losing the light of the sun, the other satellite that was going this way caught it. And actually, it wasn't until about maybe, like, two weeks ago that I realized that the satellites don't go all in different directions. They all orbit on the same orbit. There isn't a satellite that goes in the opposite direction. So what the heck was that? That's the first thing that I saw. So with my spirituality, I started to do some studying and I was studying about Metatron. I don't know if you have ever heard of Metatron. In the... Sumerian tablets. So the Sumerian tablets are um, the oldest writings that we have right now. They're even older than Egyptian writings. And in the Sumerian tablets, they have a story called the Epic of Gilgamesh. And the Epic of Gilgamesh is basically the story of the flood. And it even has the central character, Enoch. That's the same as Enoch in the Bible. And Enoch gets taken away by God, right? So, because he was so, so good. In the Epic of Gilgamesh, Enoch gets taken by God and given a new name, Metatron. He becomes like an archangel. And so I was doing some uh, Metatron meditations. I was meditating with Metatron. And when the, all this started happening, when I started to meditate with Metatron, it happened that I was in my bedroom and I saw an orb. I was starting to go to sleep um, because I always read at bedtime. So I was reading, you know, get reading, getting ready to go to sleep. And all of a sudden I see something move out of the corner of my eye up here and I look over and it's an orb and it's about this big and it's moving towards me. And I, I got scared. <laughs> so I just closed my eyes and I went, and I just went, I just went to sleep. I kept my eyes closed until I went to sleep. And it was a little while later, it happened again. And that time I just straight out, I come out and said, look it, I am not ready for this. You got to go. And that was it. Because we have more power than they have, right? You tell it to go, they have to go. Like, that's just how it is. We have more power here in this plane of existence. They can scare us, but that's about it. Um, so that happened. And so I was at, so I ended up going to Canada's Wonderland with my partner. And, uh, cause I used to love up until my car accident three years ago, I used to love roller coasters. I, we would actually just him and I like drop off the kids to somebody to watch them. And we would go for two days. Like we would just, the two of us would just be like walking around, you know, the amusement park, Canada's wonderland, and just be doing all, all the behemoth and all the different, you know, huge roller coasters. So we went to this one roller coaster and it was kind of like Top Gun that they have at, um, what was that one? Oh my goodness. Sandusky, Ohio. They have, um, an amusement park. Anyhow, they, 
it's like a hanging one. It's like where the, it's at your, the rails are above you and you're in a, so then when you're going around the corners, you're going like this. So I started to get a little anxiety before going on this. And I never get anxiety on roller coasters. So I was like, oh, this is odd. And I thought, okay, I'm just going to meditate. I'm just going to close my eyes and like get into like, you know, a relaxed state. And I decided to invite Metatron to enjoy this roller coaster ride with me. So I get on the roller coaster ride and I literally just closed my eyes. And I kept my eyes closed for the pretty much the whole day. I might have opened them up a little bit, but just closed them and like just tried to stay in a relaxed state and just feel the movement of the roller coaster. And I did that. We get to the end of the roller coaster. And you know how you have an attendant that comes and checks your seatbelt to make sure that it's done right so that you don't fall and sue the park or whatever. So, or die. Um, he comes over and it was the same attendant that had buckled me in. It was like an Asian person. And you'll never guess what his name tag said. His name was Enoch. I'm elbowing my partner. I'm like, look, look. And he couldn't believe it either. He was actually like, because he knows. Like, I tell him everything that, I, that I'm learning. As I'm learning it, I tell it. He actually has a nickname for me. He calls me Preacher Jose. I'm not a preacher, but I was always, that's what I do. When I learn stuff, I, the people that I know, I'm telling them what I'm learning. So, so he was well aware of the Enoch Metatron. And I told him that I was doing a Metatron meditation during this and allowing Metatron to, to be with me. And then all of a sudden my attendant's name was Enoch, his name tag. That's not even a call. I've never seen that name on anybody ever. So I have some more stuff that I'll be able to talk about in a little bit, but I'm already at like in almost 17 minutes and I'm going to cut it off here. Um, thanks for joining me on my journey to I am. Um, if you have, have you had any similar experiences? Has, has, you know, were you scared? Were you excited? Were you feeling like it was somebody that was protecting you rather than trying to hurt you like because I never felt that anything was ever trying to harm me communicate with me maybe but not harm me um and definitely uh I I found it fascinating I because being an agnostic like believer I need proof I need some I need to be able to see something right so this this these things have shown me that there is more to this plane of existence. Now, before I go, I do want to tell you one thing. I'm not sure if you're aware, but we live on the rainbow spectrum. What that means is, is that we live, so there's like an energy scale, right? It's actually like a, whatever way you want to look at it, but the energy scale, the rainbow, so red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, they vibrate at a certain vibration, like energy vibration. And that's where we live, is in this energy, this frequency, and, and because we can see it. We can see all the colors. Once you get above purple, there's ultraviolet. It's, it's colorless to us. It's blind. Like, we can't see it. And when you get below red, there's radiation. And we don't see that either. So all energy above UV and all energy below radiation are invisible to our eyes. They're not on our physical plane of existence. So it sounds kind of silly, but we could have actually, not silly, but it, incredulous, how about that? Um, we could actually be having things that live at those higher frequencies that we don't see or lower frequencies that we don't see inhabiting the exact same space that we are and we don't see them. So something to think about there. I don't know if you know that, you know, we live on the rainbow spectrum. That's, that's where we're at. And uh, just thought I'd share that with you. So I hope you guys have a great week and I hope you learned something new today. That's always my favorite thing to do. And again, as always, I love you because I love me. You have a great day.